Okay, iron rich foods. So if you were pregnant, you probably had someone harp on at you about iron already. <laughs> but if you were pregnant, then just take a minute to think about, particularly if you were low in iron in pregnancy. Most talks I do, about half of the women who were pregnant were low in iron. And they often say things like they felt really tired, they felt fatigued, they just couldn't get through their days. And I think that shows you how important iron is for our energy levels. Iron is also really important for the immune system. If you know someone who just catches everything, every infection that's going around, I'd be checking iron levels. The other reason why we focus in on iron-rich foods, particularly for our babies, and why babies need so much iron, they need it's kind of like 1.5 times the amount of iron per day than an adult male. So they need a whole lot of iron every day for their brain development. Now, when the baby's born, their brain is about 25% the size of an adult brain. By the time that baby is two to three years old, their brain becomes... 75 to 80 percent the size of an adult brain so all of that rapid growth um, think about it like your baby's brain is literally being built grown developed based on a number of things such as talking to your baby will grow your baby's brain just responding to your baby looking in your baby's eyes things like that will help with baby's brain development but that's a whole nother talk for a whole nother day in terms of nutrition Iron is really, really important. Uh, iron is used by every single cell in the body, including baby's brain. With um, baby's brain, what we know is that toddlers who get enough iron do better on memory and IQ tests than toddlers who don't. It's really, really important to try to prioritize iron-rich foods. A great resource for this, um, not sure if I can pop it in the chat, but if you wanna write it down somewhere, Beef and Lamb New Zealand have an amazing resource that these two pictures here are actually from. And they have pictures, recipes, information, all about how to give meat to babies. So if your family do eat meat, that is absolutely where I'd suggest you go. And all of their resources were updated with the Ministry of Health and Infant Feeding Guidelines. So it's all kind of same, same information. Okay, this is who's at risk of iron deficiency. Um, and if any of these are you, uh, just go, you can have a little chat to your GP or other medical professional. Iron deficiency, here's what to look out for. Um, so like we said, that recurrent infections. Often people who are low on iron have this like look at it. Them. They just look a little bit pale if you're having digestive tummy issues, reduced weight gain, um, and then grumpy and irritable. Uh, that one's there, but it did make me laugh a little bit. If you've ever um, hung out with a, with a toddler, <laughs> here's my little grumpy toddler on the screen. Um, they are gorgeously grumpy at times, but that's what to look out for here. And another picture from Beef Land New Zealand with kind of that mashed food. Here's a list of foods. This is a snapshot directly from the Ministry of Health guidelines. Good choices of iron-rich foods. So if you do eat meat, meat is there. In general, the more red the meat is, the more iron is in it. And the iron from meat is easily absorbed into our bodies. Um, mussels also have a good amount of iron in them though. So if you are wondering how to get muscles into babies. What I've seen in the starting solids world from America is they do a lot of what they call, I think they call them pancakes. We might call them, they look like corn fritters. So they put things like mussels and spinach into a bit of a fritter, you know, zucchini fritter, for example, and adding in some mussels. And that's how they get lots of iron rich foods into baby. I think that's definitely something here that we could do, or even just our good old corn fritters um, with a handful of iron-rich foods in them. Uh, dark leafy greens is a nice way to get a little bit of iron into babies as well. And, you know, let your baby surprise you with what they do and don't like in terms of taste. 
This is a baby who was eating kale chips. Some babies love, you know, all of those bitter foods as well. So there's no such thing as kid food and adult food. It's all just food. Feed your baby lots of different kinds of food, a big variety from the get-go. And you can see here, if you're sticking to veggies, legumes, um, tofu is quite a good source as well. Then meat, if you do eat meat, then you're probably going to be hitting your iron goals, as well as getting in good fiber for gut health, as well as having good short and long-term health outcomes. Um, up on the screen here is a kadu, like a pumpkin curry with some lentils in it. That's fine to feed to babies as well. We don't need to be avoiding things like garlic or spice, especially if it's your normal family food. Remembering that your baby's already had a taste of the normal family food from pregnancy. And so if your family do eat things like curries, um, spicy stir fries or something like that, you can feed those to your baby too. There's no reason not to. Or a good variety of herbs is absolutely fine as well. Don't feel like you have to. Um, babies never had food before and so even the most bland thing in the world which for me would be a boiled potato is a whole new taste experience for baby so don't feel like you have to flavor it but you absolutely can and herbs even have lots of good nutrition in them if you don't eat meat a good tip you can see on the screen is to serve your iron rich foods with a bit of vitamin c the vitamin c will help the iron to absorb into the body